So, how does it look? The shirt, not the hair. I know what I know what that looks like. <sighs> Today we're going to talk about Depeche Mode. Let's go. Speak and Spell was released on the 5th of October 1981 and it's pretty alright. Most of this just fun synth pop, the atmosphere and melodies are often so sweet cats you feel like getting a sugar rush. Like on I sometimes wish I was dead. Well actually, that song just gives me nightmares of the smurfs. The three singles, New Life, Dreaming of Me and Just Can't Get Enough, still one of the most famous songs of the band, are absolute synth pop jams. As a disease, the album as a whole suffers from them. It's just too clean. With the music of the time, they were made to have short term success that would let the band fall into obscurity once they wouldn't produce hits anymore, because of a lack of known personality. That approach and sound wouldn't have kept the band alive for long, or at least not kept them relevant to the modern day, and just left them as one of the many synth pop acts of the 80s. There's one big exception though, photographic. I specifically mean the version from Speak and Spell and not the one from some bizarre album. An album featuring then unsigned artists that was actually released before Speak and Spell and thus the first ever album to feature any music by Depeche Mode. Back to Photographic however, it has about as many great melodies as all the other songs on the album combined. And Dave Garn's not fully developed singing voice actually works well here with his whispers that serve the sinister atmosphere very well. This is probably the first great Depeche Mode song, and still one of my favorites of them to date. It's also the first showcase of what will be great about them in the future. After Speak and Spell, songwriter and main keyboarder Vince Clark left the band, and actually enjoyed huge success over the course of the decade. Here are just a few of the songs he wrote. Anyway, his work as keyboarder was taken over by Alan Wilder who would also go on to be the main arranger for the band's songs that Martin Gore would go on to write. I think when going into what I would call the Demo Law, this is considered the worst album pre-2000. And I have to disagree. This is definitely more unique than Speak and Spell and probably my favorite out of the first three albums. Leave in Silence is a great opener and the moment when the vocals drop out and the drums and keyboards perfectly build tension, that's my favorite moment of the album. Monument also gives off that sense of unease, but the meaning of love falls out of it completely in having another sugar sweet synth melody that would have fitted well on Speak and Spell. The single See You then is a great representation of the album as a whole in combining the sweet and the sinister aspects of it. The Broken Frame is an okay album with good moments, but most importantly, for Demo, it was the first part of the process of them evolving into what they would become in the future. I always wonder if the title implies that time is construction or that it's time for constructing. There's obviously one song that we have to talk about when mentioning this album. Everything Counts. One well, of the first big hits of the band and the classic of their discography. It also marked one of the first times that Depeche Mode got political, pointing out that And that is not the only premiere. More Than a Party has the first usage of an actual bass in one of their songs and gives off post-punk vibes. Overall, however, this is my least favorite of the ones so far and spoiler alert, it will remain as it until the turn of the millennium. So at this point you might be wondering, 
what is when is the term that that dark provocative sound finally started to became a thing for Depeche Mode and I'm happy to announce that this is the point where that starts and not just that I think this is the first really good Depeche Mode album something to do and lie to me open the album again with that unspecific horror that you can't really grasp in where it comes from but where's the provocative we call it master and servants oh well there we go but apart from just being provocative master and servant is also just a cool song main synth melody is catchy as hell but what is that leopard like scream the arm as a whole doesn't just go into that direction however Somebody is a nice ballad and one of the few songs sung by Martin Gore. But now we want some industrial. People are people, of course, isn't the only song here using industrial instrumentation. See the drums on Blasphemous Rumors. But it definitely was the one making the public conscious what the band was doing, because of it being kind of a big hit. And how could it not be? Just listen to that hook. I think this album suffers from what I would call the rubber soul effect, which is basically that the band releases their best album up to that point, but because the follow ups are even better, it doesn't get the love that it definitely would deserve. If there's anything certain for Depeche Mode albums up to this point, it's in them having great openers. And the title track Black Celebration is no exception. It has an epicness in its darkness that foreshadows the whole album, just as showing one more thing. Dave Garn is a great singer. His range, but especially just his presence on that song and all of the ones following is just magnificent. Most notably the album centerpiece Stripped. Arguably the climax of the Pashmont's edgy sinister face. The whole vibe is industrial and stiff in a creepy way and the synthfolk encapsulates it perfectly. Talking about hooks, one has to mention a question of time, a guaranteed headbanger. And for another standout, there's the belt of almost the same name, Question of Lust. And you know what's the scary thing? Even the deluxe version is great. Most notably Shake the Disease that was released about the same time, but never made it onto the actual album. I adore this song. Just listen to the chorus. There are three hooks catchy enough to carry an entire song on its own, playing all at the same time by fitting expertly together. Probably the best arranged song the band ever did. But even without it, Black Celebration is the first truly great album by the band and a staple of the 80s electro industrial scene. Black Celebration was a peak of industrial depression mode, music for the masses where they really started to go hunting for the big arenas, as the title suggests. And that starts with the first song, Never Let Me Down Again. Now the first track on the Depeche Mode albums is by definition one of the best on that album, but Never Let Me Down Again is one of the best songs they ever made. The chorus is great. The synths and drums are bursting out of energy and the choir excerpts are anthemic. One of the Pashmore's absolute best works. Something goes for Strange Rock. The melody is hooky and the arrangement is just about perfect in making the song both danceable and captivating in a thrilling way. Something that these songs show about the album as a whole is that it's much more approachable than its predecessor. All the synths, drums and so on feel like they took a step out of the dark chamber, which makes it easier to get them. The things you said, somewhere Martin for instance, keeps distance from making the drum machines sound aggressive 
and the sim specific for that style, but instead play it simple to make the song a very polished, nice ballad. That doesn't mean there aren't dark songs, however. Little 15. Don't worry, it's not about what you think it is, so... Colleen, we don't need a ukulele, okay? Or behind the wheel, keep the sinister vibe. However, it is diminished a bit by, as I said, the clear production on the album as a whole. However, they are really well written songs. Music for the masses in general is definitely the Passion Road's most commercially oriented work so far, and also the best in doing it. supposed to say it's a classic word of my eyes is excellent and i don't just mean it's a right excellence but like this would have been the best song on each of the first five albums i love that <laughs> sound in the verses that actually comes from fleetwood mac riff that was sampled and then played backwards that part where the synth suddenly plays a solo after the chorus the strings how is this so good? Personal Jesus is not just one of the first instances of Depeche Mode using a guitar very prominently in the music, but also the most famous one, with a great riff and a single on chorus. Waiting for the Night is just so beautiful, especially like the little bell, like stereo sounds after about two minutes. The policy of the truth is just brilliant. It has a casual coolness to it and is full of great details like the howling guitar in the bridge. But the highlight of the whole album has to be Enjoy the Silence. This song just manages to take any weight off your shoulders for the duration of the song and convey an aura of safety like not many other songs are able to do. Violator is a brilliant album and the magnum opus of the band they spent about 10 years to achieve. So what do you do after just making your best album? Well, something different. The band's 8th album often features more of an industrial sound replacing dance beats found on some Violator songs. A great example of that is in the opener I Feel You, that draws resemblance to the grunge scene that was popular at the time and also has a little bit of Nine Inch Nails sound as well. In Your Room works in a similar industrial way and especially shines with its outro. However, a lot of the songs here also feel very stripped down and atmospheric. Condemnation stands out in that with blues influenced sound and one of Dave Gahan's best ever vocal performances. Honesty, the lyrics of the whole album feel tortured in part because of the making of the album being a problem and Martin and Dave not really having a good time to say the least. In the end, Songs of Faith and Devotion manages to be a great follow-up to Violator and one of, if not the darkest Depeche Mode album ever. A title only one more album could compete with. So after Songs of Faith and Devotion, for a brief moment Depeche Mode seemed to be history, as Alan Wilder left the band just as producer Flood. Andrew Fletcher also thought about doing so, but then changed his mind and Dave Gahan, the singer, almost died of an heroin overdose. But in the end, they managed to get back together as the remaining three members and even make their ninth studio album in Ultra. There are a few things making this album unique. Even more than its predecessor, it uses a lot of live instrumentation or samples that sound like it. Given that its predecessor was kind of trip hop influenced, it is rather fitting that one of the two biggest tour bands, Massive Attack, went into a similar direction the following year with Mesoma. The most notable instances of that live instrumentation 
are the blues like guitars that make for some of my favorite moments in the whole discography, with the riffs on The Love Thieves and Free State. What you may also notice is that this is Depeche Mode's slowest album so far. Almost all the songs are about 6 minutes, and such as on its predecessor have a claustrophobic energy to them. It's no good, for example, has the synths playing a melody that intensifies before the verse begins. The beat also seems fitting for the club, but it's just so aggressive that it's almost threatening. The whole song just seems off. The slower tempo also adds an aura to some of the songs like they are of special importance, like Inside. Ultra focuses on the stark vibe but less so dives into it, like Songs of Faith and Devotion does and instead just seems to accept it as its environment. Another very good album. So here we are, in the 2000s. Let's start with the good things. When the body speaks is one of the best ballads they ever made. It's tender, nice and bittersweet. What the flesh requires keeps her heart in prison Dream On, the lead single, has a cool guitar passage that kind of reminds me of Ariel's by System of Down. But that's it I guess. The band had their best years behind them and it shows. The different songs don't do much to set themselves apart from one another and the lyrics are so cliche and predictable that it almost hurts. Overall I'd say Excite is their weakest album up to this point. Crashes is their best song in the new millennium. And that's all I have to say about the album, literally. I think it would just be fitting to talk about all of these three albums at once, as there isn't really that much to talk about. And part of that could possibly be because for all the other albums I at least knew like one song for like five, at least five years before I went into this dive, apart from like Momentum Mori for obvious reasons. And for this one there isn't really any song apart from Heaven from Delta Machine. And the albums just don't really give me that much to think about either. Like I just listen to them and I'm like, yeah, that's a song. That's it, no emotion whatsoever. And Delta Machine in particular, it's a double album, but well, there isn't that much Delta going on, is there? <laughs> oh, I am still for that. So after working as a trio from 1997 onwards, Andrew Fletcher died in 2022. So the two remaining members set themselves together to make one more album that isn't yet confirmed to be the last of the bands, but that I think would be fitting to be. Ironically enough, none of their most recent albums felt nearly as adventurous or energetic as this one. Plus, the emotional impact of these songs seems so much more real than former ones. Before We Drown is a cool song that seems like it could have been a single out of the Black Celebration era with Modern Touch. People Are Good kind of sounds like Kraftwerk, it has a cool beat. And Speak To Me is a nice hands to the album that also shines lyrically. The best representation for the album as a whole however is the lead single Ghosts Again. The best single in more than 15 years. The chord progression is simple but effective and the way it expands after the first chorus has a bit of sweetness to it but also just seems hopeful which is exactly what the album as a whole strives for. Memento Mori is Depeche Mode's best album since the turn of the millennium and a respectful goodbye to one of its members. So if you're trying to get into Depeche Mode I'd say the run from some great reward onto Ultra is like the best of their career. Like all of these albums are very worth listening to and very good. 
and like celebration music for the masses and violator are like the peak of the bunch and if you're just looking for singular tracks to listen to by the bands like these would be my top 10 favorite songs by them thanks for watching hey thank you all as well for watching if you like this video please consider subscribing i have a very small channel so every subscription would mean the world to me Listen to my music on Spotify, you can find that under the name Arnimente. And yeah, listen to music.